Good morning, everybody. After following Carolyn and Joe, I kind of feel like the number eight hitter for the Royals. I'm just going to try and uh, basically run out a weak infield single and see if I can get a few laughs and help everybody relax a little bit. So I'm here today to talk about state and local government outlook. Now, to be, to be honest with you, I'd prepared this kind of lead-in where I talked about how important it was to be aware of what's going on in the government sector. But I think you've seen it already from the comments from the earlier presenters and the panel discussion, just the impact and the role of government in helping the private economy achieve where it wants to be. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about Lots of facts and figures. Uh, contrary to what, what, uh, what Joe said earlier, I'm, I am going to bore you with statistics. Um, but I'm going to talk a lot about what, how this, the state and local government sector uh, can either be a drag on economic growth or, or help move us forward. Um, then at the end, I'm going to talk about some challenges and some opportunities going forward. I'm going to violate Harry Truman's uh, favorite rule. I'm not going to be a one-handed economist, but I'm going to say on the one hand this and on the other hand this. So uh, with that, I'm going to start out by just giving you some background about government's role in the economy. Now, I'm going to talk primarily about taxes and spending, um, where Kansas kind of stacks up and, and where it has been going. Um, I'm not going to talk about, a lot about regulation because uh, I don't think it's a great environment to talk about it. Um, but I would note that, that the, what, what the previous panelists have said, I think, is, is basically uh, what our thinking is on it is that uh, there needs to be a balance between uh, regulations that, that take into account public concerns for health and welfare and safety, while at the same time not being too burdensome uh, or introducing uncertainty uh, into the private market. So here's my first boring statistic, um, and that's on the tax burden within the state of Kansas. Now, I've lived in 10 states since, uh, since graduating high school. Um, in every single state, everybody I talked to was convinced that their taxes were the highest. Obviously, at least in nine of them, it was probably wrong. I, I did live in Minnesota for a while, so that was probably close to true. Um, the best numbers that we have on tax burdens at the state and local level come, out, come actually from a study out of the District of Columbia. Uh, every year, the federal government requires the District of Columbia to compare its tax burdens to the tax burdens of the largest city in each of the 50 states. And so by doing so, you get a nice kind of cross-sectional view about what the tax burden is. And what they do is they create what's called a hypothetical household. So they look at household consumption spending, what we spend on food, electricity, uh, those type of things. And then they look at the tax structures in order to come up with their figures. And they do so at five income levels, and that's the five rows in the table. And as you can see, our tax burden in Kansas uh, ranks in the bottom half, uh, and in some cases in the bottom third of the country. Now this is uh, as of 2015. Uh, before the 2012 tax cuts, we were a little bit higher, but we were still in the, we were still in the bottom half. We were, anywhere between 25th and 30th, depending upon income level. Um, and you also see some comparisons with our neighbors. Uh, in Oklahoma, they have, they have relatively higher tax burdens, but they have a more progressive tax system uh, than we do here with higher rates on, on higher income households um, and, and lower rates uh, or about similar rates on low income households. The other thing in terms of taxes is we do a lot of studying about what the impact of, of taxes are on the economy. Um, most of the studies that are out there indicate that the, the effect is about a, we, we call a tax price elasticity, you can ignore the term and concentrate on what I'm about to say, um, of minus 0 0.1 to minus 0 0.4. What that means is if we cut taxes by 10%, economic growth will increase by about uh, between 1 and 4%. Um, a study that, that we did uh, out of uh, Wichita State University along with my, my co-author, Dr. Ari Pawi Shithangrung. In 2014, uh, ours was right in the middle of this. We found a tax price elasticity of about minus 0 0.3. And we looked at all 50 states over 40 years in order to come up with those figures. 
Now, how about the role of spending? Well, in terms of spending, what we talk about are multipliers. So if we invest a dollar in government spending, or, or I'm sure a lot of you would come up with a different term than invest, um, what is the impact on the overall economy? Well, we get this from two different places. First of all, are from what are called regional economic models. Uh, at Wichita State, we use one called IMPLAN um, to, to chart out, uh, for example, if you created a, a job or had an extra dollar in sales in the aircraft industry, what would happen to the rest of the economy? We can do the same thing with, uh, with both st state and local payroll, which is a, a proxy for operational spending in governments, and highway and street capital spending, which is a proxy for capital investment uh, by, by state and local governments. And you can see lots of different impacts, so um, just concentrate on the column on the right for a second. Uh, the estimates from Implan is that operational spending, a dollar uh, of operational spending by state and local governments adds about $1.36 to the local economy, and a uh, dollar of capital spending uh, creates more than $2 in economic activity. Now, statistical estimates differ. Um, these estimates are from the study that I mentioned before with my colleague. Um, we found slightly lower estimates where operational spending basically about broke even. A dollar of government spending produces about a dollar increase in economic uh, output. But capital spending still showed a very good response in terms of, of the response of the, the economy to capital spending. So with that background, let me talk about what has been happening in state and local finances and uh, uh, where we think things are going to go in the future. So this is actually a really relatively good year to be talking about state finances uh, within Kansas. Um, you see here a graph of the state general fund. Now one of the things I really want to, want to emphasize is this isn't the only money that the state government has to spend. Okay, when you read in the newspaper about a state budget deficit, that state budget deficit, that's for the general fund. That's not for funds that they get from the federal government, not from funds generally from fees and charges which go into other funds. But this is kind of the, the overall budget for the state. And you can see the pattern here, 2008 to 2010, revenues declined uh, fairly precipitously along with, along with spending. Then we had pretty good growth. So the blue line is uh, revenues and the, the red line is expenditures. Uh, then you saw the 2013 tax cuts. You see the effect in terms of revenue uh, decline, uh, along with a slight fall off in spending, although not enough to close the gap. And so that's what opened up the large deficits that we've seen at the state level over the last few years. This is just a graph of the big two revenues. Um, the state government gets about 65 to 70 percent of all of its general fund revenues from the income tax and the sales tax. And what you see here again is you see, well, first of all, the effects of the recession. The recession hit the individual income tax in Kansas a lot harder than the sales tax. I'm going to talk about why that is in just a second. But then you see again this drop off in individual income tax revenues in 2014. Uh, that never really recovered, whereas sales taxes have grown fairly steadily over time uh, with an upward trend. So this is our forecast for where things are headed in the future. Uh, this is for the individual income tax. The green line to the left of uh, 2017 uh, is actual individual income tax receipts. And then you see two lines to the right that are very close together. The, the red line uh, is, for, is from what's called the Consensus Revenue Estimating Committee. That's the committee that estimates uh, revenues officially for the state of Kansas. Uh, the, the yellow line that's marked KPFC are estimates that my center, the Kansas Public Finance Center, produces independently. Um, we have a statistical model um, that we use to forecast uh, the, the economy. And they're very similar. Um, we show that the repeal of, of the 2012 tax cuts uh, will add a little over $600 million back into the state general fund. Um, our forecast is a little bit lower than the Consensus Revenue Estimating Committee, 
because of that tax price elasticity, we do expect there to be a little bit of a, of, uh, a slowing in growth, maybe lasting a year or two, um, because of the, the increased taxes. In terms of retail sales tax forecasts, uh, we, we uh, see stronger growth in retail sales be, uh, uh, because of some provisions within uh, retail sales. Also, as I mentioned before, the individual income tax here is very strongly affected by GDP uh, growth. It, there's a correlation, and again, I'm using statistics, so I'm watching people's eyes glaze over, but there's a correlation of about 0.77, which is a very strong correlation. So as the economy moves up and down, individual income tax revenues move up and down. We find very little statistical correlation between, uh, between state GDP and retail sales. And so what that leads us to believe is that the, the historical pattern is going to hold more for retail sales and it's going to grow faster. We put this together into an estimate of uh, revenue and expenditure forecasts. The important thing here is that we've more or less reestablished structural balance. There's one big thing missing here. What I put into the expenditure estimates, which are the blue estimates, are the school finance numbers from the spring. As of Monday, the Supreme Court ruled that, that the, even the current formula is unconstitutional. So, Spending may end up growing faster than what we think it's going to grow, um, which may put us uh, back out of structural balance just a little bit. At the local level, I just want to cover quickly. Um, the, as I looked, look uh, pleadingly at Deb, um, you see strong growth in the uh, kind of outlying areas. So Derby, Goddard, uh, Park Center, the inner city, uh, Wichita, and, and more close-in areas don't show the type of strong growth that you see. The other thing I'd like to mention, and this will come up when we have our panel discussion, is, is about mill levies. This is the tax rate that you pay on property values. Mill levies have generally been flat for the last several years, since 2013. Um, on, a, on a kind of a cost basis, people are paying less property tax, which is curious given that we just passed a tax lid uh, that, that would theoretically constrain the growth of this when we really hadn't seen that much growth going forward. Um, and then I couldn't do Kat, Kathy's favorite one, which is about sales tax growth. Um, sales tax, as I said, has been growing very uh, strongly. There's only two areas that have had a sales tax over this entire period, and that's Cedric County and Derby. So I, I didn't put on, for example, Hayesville, which just enacted the sales tax, I believe, in 2015. Um, that should be a strong source of revenue growth going forward. And then I think I'll probably save the outlooks and outlook and challenges for the panel discussion. So with that, I will uh, turn it over to Deb. <laughs> 